Brian Bilbray is a congressman from California, San Diego, Carlsbad, Escondido, and other areas as well. Good morning, Congressman. Yeah, good morning. And I'm a son of a legal immigrant who flew all the way from Guam and uh, gave birth to me on at uh, North Island Naval Air Station because she was worried about my status uh, because she didn't understand the 14th Amendment. Wow. How about that? But, but she did it legally. Legally. Yeah, she was here legally. Yeah. Well, Congressman, before we get to the issue at hand, uh, Cisco and I both want to say good morning and salam alika, echoing the president's speech in uh, Cairo, Egypt this morning. So uh, welcome to the program. Yeah. Well, great to be on. Uh, let, let's talk about this. Uh, this uh, the immigration issue here is we've just explained that there is a problem in this nation with people who specifically come here hoping to have their babies on U.S. soil uh, because then there is citizenship. And you are among a group of congressmen that would like to to change that. How exactly would you go about changing it, and is this is something that's actually going to be able to happen? Well, in, in fact, I was the chairman of San Diego County. We, we supervised the hospitals uh, for an area of about 3 million people. And we watched where even legal immigrants would come across that weren't permanent resident aliens. Um, if you wanted to get free health care and get automatic citizenship for your children, you lived in Tijuana, you just came across when you were in going into labor, you stayed in the parking lot until you um, uh, dilated to 10 centimeters, and then by law they have to not only deliver the baby for free, but they have to, they are now uh, um, giving them citizenship, and then they apply, they, they qualify for welfare. So this whole thing is a dirt, you know, little, little cycle here, but uh, what we point out is that the 14th Amendment does not give everyone born on U.S. citizen um, uh, I mean, U.S. soil citizenship. In fact, um, you point out appropriately, subject to the jurisdiction as a mm-hmm. conditioning clause. Yeah. That is why the children of, of diplomats have never been given citizenship. And the subject to the jurisdiction goes back to a 1608 British case called the Calvin case. And subject means, could your parents be tried for treason? Could they be drafted? Were they subject to the call and the, of the government? And that was, could the government force them into service? and require them to be loyal. And terrorists don't fall into that. Diplomats uh, don't fall into that. That's why their children going in there. And illegal aliens obviously don't. Um, so this whole thing creates a situation like you had that terrorist that was caught in Afghanistan and said, I'm a U.S. citizen because my parents were not poor immigrants. They were wealthy Saudi Arabians who were here as tourists. And the mother delivered a baby, and he's now claiming citizenship when there's no way the parents could have been tried for treason. There's no way the parents had obligations to serve in the military. Thus, they hadn't earned the right of yeah. citizenship for their child to inherit. Yeah, that's a good, that is a, a great point, because with the rights of citizenship also comes the responsibilities of citizenship. Absolutely. And that's where you've got to understand that a re- resident, a legal resident alien can be uh, drafted into the military and can be uh, tried for treason. Now, Nathan Deal picked up this bill when I spent my, you know, with, I, I left Congress for a while, and he actually improved it because he's clarified it by saying the children of U.S. citizens qualify for automatic citizenship. Mm-hmm. Those who are legal resident aliens do, and those who are illegal aliens but are serving at active duty in the military. And this is why it's important. This amendment really points it out. It's not about being legal or illegal. It's being, are you subject to the jurisdiction? And even illegal aliens, if they've joined the military now, can be forced to serve because they signed up and can be tried for treason. And those three categories are the only three categories that are subject to the jurisdiction as defined by the 14th Amendment. Does it take legislation to change this, or does it have to actually end up amending the Constitution? How how can you make this change? No, you don't need to amend the Constitution, because the Constitution has the conditioning clause subject to the jurisdiction. We would have to amend it if it just said everyone born on U.S. soil is is a U.S. citizen. Um, In fact, in the debate of this on on the floor of the House and the Senate, it was pointing out that the freed slaves could be forced into um, service into the military and could be... Um, tried for treason, and thus their children have a you know have a right that is earned by their parents' obligations of loyalty and obedience. Talking to our congressman Brian Bilbray here on AM five sixty WID, is a congressman from the fiftieth district of California. We're talking about anchor babies, and uh, this move by a few politicians to perhaps not you know not have to do an amendment to the constitution, but really effectively change change a couple things so that there would be some responsibilities for for folks to have their their children become U.S. 
U.S. citizens. Now, La Raza, not surprisingly, is against this. In fact, their executive vice president says here, and I'd like you to comment on this, the worst part of this is that you end up with potentially millions of children who are stateless, who were born here and have no ties to any other country, uh, yet they're not considered citizens or part of the United States. In essence, just... uh, Kids with, without a country, how do you respond to that, Congressman? Absolutely false. It's just like the children of diplomats. If a foreign national gives birth in other countries, those countries recognize the parents' um, uh, uh, obligations to that country. And just like any diplomat, anybody, um, just like um, a United States citizen being born somewhere else, if you're born in France, I mean, if, you know, you went to France and you, your wife had a child in France, what citizenship? And France doesn't give citizenship there. Does that mean that your, cho- your child wouldn't have a nationality? No, they'd be American. And just like that, if somebody comes in from Indonesia and gives birth to the United States, they're Indonesian. And that's a, that's a fact. If a tourist coming in from Saudi Arabia, this guy who came in from Saudi Arabia and his mother gave birth to him here, he's Saudi Arabian. So La Raza is using this whole scare tactic on the basis of the fact that somehow there's some conspiracy. Here's the issue. Your citizenship is not something that the ground that you're standing on gives you. It is an inheritance that you receive from your parents because they were obligated to the government, and it's, and it's an inheritance. If the parents have not um, earned the, the right of citizenship for their child, they have nothing for the child to inherit. What do you do about, because it just, I mean, purely talking politics for a moment, I mean, you know, as you push this and other congressmen push this as well, the left is going to say to Hispanics, an ever-increasing portion of the population and the electorate, they're going to say, oh, see, the Republicans, they're, they're against you. Not, not they don't like you. Not Republicans, evil Republicans. But yeah, they add some adjectives for sure. I mean, they're going to use this politically to try to say, see, don't vote for the Republicans because they're against specifically the Mexican immigrants. Oh, yeah, well, they'll use that if you don't give them citizenship to the illegals, too. They're already using that one. You can't, you can't abandon the rule of law. You can't abandon the basic constitutional structures we have for political expediency and still look yourself in the mirror and say that you're a, a true blue American. The fact is, is that if we start, continue to find excuses not to stand by the law, not to understand that the rule of law makes us what we are, we sit there, we can go and sit there and look at other countries and say, how do they become so corrupt? How do they lose the ability of law? It's because political expediency goes in front of what, um, what's really important, that our founding fathers drew a very bright line between legal and illegal. And you're going to have these people always attacking Democrat, Republican, or independent, who says, wait a minute, you want to come here legally, you want to play by the rules, we'll welcome you with open arms. But if you violate the rules. Don't break the rules and expect to be rewarded for it, especially in a world where the hundred million people who would love to come here legally have never broken our laws. You're not offering them citizenship. You're not offering their children free health care and, and welfare programs. You're not offering the people who play by the rules. This is really the cruel and, and, and uh, you know, immoral action to sit there and continue to for political reasons, to reward those who would break our laws. It seems like there has to be an explanation to the, uh, the let's face it, the middle-of-the-road uh, Americans who don't necessarily care about this issue or see how it affects them. There has to be an explanation that, hey, this is not anti-immigrant, this is not anti-Mexican, anti-Eastern European, I mean, you, you name it, it's not against them. We instead have to show them it's not racist, it's not being against uh, folks coming to this country, but it does have a financial impact on every single one of us. And during this time of recession, I think it's a great time to start explaining that to people. Well, I think the people ought to understand that three-quarters of the Medicare births, there you go. Medicaid births in, in Los Angeles are to the children of illegal aliens. And then they immediately apply for welfare, and then you get into that aspect. And let me tell you something. You want to talk about racism. There's two types of racism. One that applies a law only to somebody because of their, their ethnic or, or racial background. The other is those like La Raza who want people exempted from the rules and regulations based on the color of their skin or their ethnic background. That is racism. And, you know, and, you know for some, a group that is called, you know, the, the race, for them to even point fingers, their entire premise is based on the co- concept of separating people based on an ethnic background. Congressman, we'll leave it at that. Uh, thanks so much for your time this morning. Thank you very much. Take God care. Bless.